documented the creation, evolution, and necessity of magnetic resolution imaging, otherwise known as MRI. Deep layer magnetic resonance imaging. We all know this, but we're not really sure how it works. Really, it's just three, two magnets and a radio frequency alternator. And what happens is there's two, this big magnet goes around you, and then there's a smaller one, a gradient magnet, that allows the, the nucleuses of all the atoms in your body to line up in a certain way so that the radio frequency can shoot a beam through it into the scanner. And the scanner it is the most complex part of the machine. It, uh, it assembles all the waves through the nucleus into a picture that is visible. Uh, it was curated uh, from an NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, uh, starting in the 1930s. The, the man, Raymond Damadian, was 1970-1974 is when he made this. He took the technology used for stuff like spectroscopy and put it in magnets and allowed for a safer version of looking through cells. The full body version, which is named the Indomitable, was, which is this here, was a big metal machine that, similar to the ones we use now in hospitals, it all was the magnet, the two magnets and the radio frequency, and you went inside of it, and it got a very, very basic picture, and it took hours to get. It uh, it started. It was mostly made using the medical field. Uh, also uses in forensic anthropology and other other studies of long ago, like ancient fossils and stuff. Here is a, a mummy in it they use for a thing called non-invasive uh, surgery of types to go in and look inside of the mummy without exactly opening them up to save, to save what they have found. Uh, to expect to use to look at the brain, the body, the other organs and stuff, to closely look at them without having to use surgery or using gamma rays and x-rays to look inside the body. It uh, also can be used to scan daily progress of a tumor being treated with uh, chemo or x-rays, I mean gamma rays. It's the safest of all between CT, uh, x-ray, and MRI is the safest. Uh, some odd uses are it's the non-invasive look inside anthropological studies and um, also it uses, they correlate between human brain studies and primate brain studies such as chimpanzees and orangutans and they, took the, they take the two and they put them into a model and the model allows the the scientists do see back in the past at ancient hominids and how they would have think, thought and reacted. It's also used in veterinary purposes such as looking for dogs. Same thing it would be used in humans, but for animals. It can, they also range in sizes for just small animals like dogs. They also get larger for things like horses. Uh, the advantages, it's very safe. It's very quick so you can get images almost instantly as opposed to x-ray where it takes development and all other things. And it's also very clear, distinct, and they evolved where you can see a 3D image that you can turn and look at all times in real time at the, at the brain and other body parts. The disadvantages, it's very, very expensive. It's tens of thousands of dollars. You have to be specialized to operate it, specialized to read what it puts out. Mostly neurologists do this when the, in the school to begin with. And you can't use it or na near magnetic objects or around anything with a magnet in it because it will just suck in the magnet as itself is a giant magnet and it'll just destroy the whole machine and if you have magnetic something inside your body and you go inside of it, it will rip it out of your body. <laughs> and it, also it's rather limited outside of medical with the exception of anthropological things. Okay, so when you go in there, do they put you in hospital scrubs or can you go in there with clothes? You could go in there with regular clothes. But if you have like a button, yeah. And they have the rivets, you can't. That's why they usually put you in hospital scrubs. Um, do they have a, like? Do they have the ones that stand up? Like people can stand up in? Or yes, those are those are mostly used only for head scans, and you don't you don't usually stand up. You usually sit in a chair, and it comes down over your head. So it's also allowed for studies of brain development cognition where they look at they look at a screen and they do a test while they go out scanning them and they can see in real time what the brain is doing. Wow. Has there ever been a documented case of metal implants ripping out of a patient's body? No, but there has been documented cases of prisoners going in for uh, MRIs and their the prison ink they get has metal in it and it rips it out of their skin. Well, the open ones are usually used for just flat images, things like, and they're also used for if you need to look at bones because it uses less 
that uses a harsher frequency to look at the some more solid objects. And the round ones are usually used for full body look at organs or brains or soft tissue. How do you get a force in an MRI machine? They make really big ones. Yeah, but how do you get into the phone? You sit. 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 You